Jones. How are you? Welcome to episode number 535 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. Do you know the way to the design automation conference? Well, I do. My guest this week is DAC60 Engineering Tracks Program Chair, Ambar Sakar. And we're talking all about this year's Design Automation Conference. We're chatting about the new aspects of this year's exhibition and conference, the RISC-V zone, and what you can expect from this year's visionary talks and keynotes, and also the details of the DAC60 celebration panel called Designing the Future. Also this week, following my chat with Ambar, I investigate how AI coupled with the DNA from 233 different primate species could help us unlock the mysteries of disease-causing genetic mutations in humans. All right, but first, please welcome Ambar to Fish Fry to talk all about DAC60. Hi, Ambar. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so DAC is celebrating its 60th anniversary this year, and you guys have some exciting new additions to the conference, including AI at DAC, City Bites and Beverages, the 60th celebration event. So tell me more about that and some of the new aspects of this year's exhibition and conference. I think before I go on, okay, so 60 years is in itself an amazing thing, right? And the fact that DAC being on the cutting edge stays cutting edge on so long, we must be doing a few things right. And so just 60 years just in itself is such a great celebration. And it's kind of highlighted by the fact that we have this year a record high number of submissions for both the engineering track and the regular research track. So that was very encouraging and very exciting. So we have to celebrate. In addition to the wonderful program that we are bringing in this year, what we have is we added a few more things, okay? One of the things is that we have something not technical, but, you know, like when you have this conference every present, you don't want to go too far. And yet where we are holding it, the food options are not that many. So this year, I love it. We have this, what we are calling bites and beverages. Essentially, we'll have local food trucks, local food being served. Near the premises of the convention center, I think you can just walk out there and immediately see it and taste some fares from local uh, restaurants, etc. that we serve through these food trucks. And also there will be some locally brewed beverages. So it was a great place to network, chill a little bit and connect with each other. So I'm really looking forward to it. In addition to that, every year we have this DAC party. So anybody who has a badge can join us and leave, you know, food and wine, etc. So a regular thing. In addition to that, we also have something called an AI day. As you know, I mean, if you go everywhere, everybody's talking about some aspect of AI or ML. So we have a dedicated AI day. If left up to me, I will consider every day as an AI because the material that's available. But specifically on Wednesday, we are calling it an AI day because what we have tried to do is give almost 80% of our AI content lined up that day. So that's what we are calling AI day. But, you know, if you are into AI, you probably hang around all of these days because there's so much material to do. Those are quite a few things. Of course, I told you about the great uh, you know, submissions, number of submissions, and pretty much a lot more coming. You have to be there. <laughs> so Risk 5 is a huge topic these days. And DAC is featuring the Risk 5 zone again this year. So tell me more about this part of the exhibition floor. As you said, right, Amelia, last year we saw a tremendous interest in Risk 5. Risk 5 as an area of interest is showing no signs of slowing down, right? So based on last year's experience, what we did this year, we have set aside something called a risk five zone, which is in the exhibit area. So in addition to the regular rich amount of material that's being presented at this DAC, right? We have presentations, invited talks, et cetera, et cetera. But in addition to that, this is an area where the entire ecosystem that's involved in uh, risk five can come and meet and network. This is primarily targeted to sort of, if you are into risk five at any aspect, you sort of join, you come to DAC, see all the presentations as well as network and interact with the exhibitors who have this rich stuff, rich set of offerings and interact with them. And as an exhibitor, you are going to meet all the enthusiasts and the decision makers there. So we are trying to facilitate that as part of this DAC. Excellent. Now, one of my favorite parts of DAC 
is the wide range of speakers that present at the conference each year, including visionary talks, keynotes, sky talks, and tech talks. So can we first talk about the sky talks and tech talks? What's the difference between these two types of presentations and what kind of presentations will be at this year's conference? Because you mentioned three or four kinds of talks, actually, I should probably, for somebody who is listening to this talk, A talk, B talk, C talk, I think I should set down some background of what each of these talks are, right? Just to sort of set the nomenclature a little bit, because that might help. So one of the key things everybody knows about keynotes, right? So, so we have four days and then in essence five days, and we have these keynote speakers, right? Who essentially are covering the entire space under the sun. So that's the keynote speakers, and you are used to them. Now, what in addition to that, every decade we have a special session arranged what we call visionary talks. All right. So this is where in and goes back to like my statement earlier about, you know, this is the 60th year, and we must have been doing something right. So these are the talks that sort of take stock every 10 years or so and see where we have been going, where are we going, etc. So set the compass a little bit. So these are the visionary talks. Now, there are only so many days in the conference, and yet there's so many excellent speakers out there. So what you can think of the Sky Talks are essentially mini keynotes. They're not as big, but they're equally far-reaching, equally looking forward to where the industry is and what are we looking forward to. So those are the keynote talks. And then there's the Tech Talks, which are like, you know, of course, DAC is a very technical conference, both at the research end as well as the application or engineering end. But you need people who understand this technology understand the whole impact at a wider scope and then present this to the audience. So you, do, you don't get too rat hole into it, but they kind of give you the whole perspective of the technology. So these are the speakers who are CTOs and such, and they sort of talk about, you know, where the technology is headed to. So those are the tech talks. So you see this variety of talks. So for example, in Sky Talks, we have representatives from Department of Defense. You get somebody talking about the AI-driven system design, and then we have another one who's talking about how to design an accelerator. These are the areas where we are emerging, so we want to hear from them. So these are the Sky Talks. On the Tech Talk side, you know, we have people who are talking about topics as diverse as quantum computing to what is like how can EDA be revolutionized, to what AI can do for us, to metaverse, essentially talking even about things in the space. Here is one cool thing, though. This year, especially in the Tech Talk, we may have a surprise for you in terms of one of the presenters, and I won't tell you anything other than you have to look it up and get for yourself. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, visionary, I think I mentioned them, you know, so they're essentially talking everything under the sun. I would highly, highly encourage you to check out the page and see which one resonates with you. Excellent. All right. Tell me more about the engineering track at this year's conference. What exactly is it and what type of content the attendees can experience? That's a dear question for me because I'm the uh, chair of the engineering track. So the key point of the engineering track is that there is a huge network of people who often have production responsibilities are highly technical and cannot really have the energy or time to sort of present really deep research papers. And yet they have a lot to learn and share. So what we did as an engineering track is to make it accessible for such people to come over to DAC, share their knowledge base and go back home with some. So to do so, what we do is we solicit submissions from them where they submit, you know, six or seven slides where they essentially capture what they're trying to do. And then those slides get peer reviewed by deep technical experts in this field. And in that way, we sort of come up with the sessions where they give brief presentations on that. So that's what we sort of had. The, and as I mentioned earlier, this year we had a record number of submissions in that regard. So engineering track is essentially combines this uh, sort of presentations that are solicited submissions, as well as the track chairs go out and curate certain invited sessions where those invited sessions could be people talking at depth or maybe just some panels. So we have contents that are made from submissions. Those are some, those are invited. And these are all like uh, somewhere not as deep in terms of uh, research angle, but are very deep in terms of production and how to sort of make it more efficient. In addition to that, we have something called uh, Poster Gladiators, which is essentially a part of the submissions. The, not all of them could have the oral presentation, and yet there's so many good things. So what we do is we also have a poster session, and out of those poster sessions, we select the best as part of uh, Poster Gladiators, where they can to get to do a little bit of a pitch, and then the audience and team of experts decide who will be the gladiator standing out at the end. So these are the kind of contents that you can get from Engineering Crack. Excellent. Now, I was also interested in the panels at DAC. Can you highlight any panels that would be of interest to our audience? 
Absolutely. But instead of directly highlighting your panels, because you have to decide for yourself, what I will do is give you some sort of a map of what those panels are and what kind they are. So there are the technical program or research panels. Let's put it up front that, you know, they cover all aspects of our industry. So I don't think I have to say anything that what is latest, what is relevant. So there are these research panels. In addition to that, on the engineering track, I mentioned there are some panels. And then there are panels that are also offered in the pavilion. So the research is uh, more academic oriented, whereas the engineering panels are more production oriented. And then the panels in the pavilion are more ecosystem oriented, where you cover many aspects of it. Great news this year, and this I should have mentioned up on set on the 60th year, is that if you are only attending the engineering track program, you still have access to the research panel, which is very interesting because I always, you know, encourage thought so many great possible cross-pollinations can happen here. So this is something that to highlight this year. So keep that in mind. That's fantastic. Now, Ambar, what kind of deadlines should my audience keep in mind? And you guys are still offering the I'd Love DAC complimentary passes, right? Absolutely. Um, so I think uh, the basic point is keep in mind June 9th. Before that, you get a substantial discounts. And after that, also, you can sign up. But if you want any of those great discounts, I try to sort of sign up before June 9th. And yes, the I Love DAC is still here. Excellent. All right, Ambar, it's time for your off-the-cuff question. Now, since you haven't been on my show before, you get my standard off-the-cuff. So, Ambar, if you could have any meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the globe, you need a passport to get there, or the restaurant's closed, what would you have? Oh, man. Hands down, any fish item from the Southeast Asia. Nice. Because I'm of that area, I came from, I come from India and I come from part of India that's very much into fish. So when I saw fish fry, I mean, that's like my second nature. So that's why there's a big resonance. <laughs> I love it. That sounds wonderful. Well, Ambar, it was a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Likewise, Amelia. Thanks for having me. Could primate DNA help us better understand genetic mutations in humans? Absolutely. With a little help from AI, that is. Did you know that in just one study, researchers from around the world have now mapped the DNA of 233 different primate species? And because of this monumental effort, a first of its kind, that the world's existing genetic data has now quadrupled? It's true. So, an important key in this research is what is called phylogenetics, which is the study of evolutionary relationships among biological entities, such as species, individuals, or genes. Lead author of this study, Thomas Marquet Bonnet, sets the stage for this research quite well. He says, the study of hundreds of non-human primate genomes, given their phylogenic position, is very valuable for human evolutionary studies. To better understand the human genome and the basis of our singularity, including the basis of human diseases, and for their future conservation. So great, we have a bunch of DNA from a whole lot of primates. But where does AI come in? Well, researchers actually use the DNA blueprints of these 233 primates as the basis of a new artificial intelligence tool called Primate AI 3D. So, Primate AI 3D actually uses a neural network of millions of benign genetic variants from those primate species and has been able to accurately identify and isolate genetic variations in human genomes which are responsible for diseases. In six human cohorts which were tested in this study, Primate AI 3D was able to identify disease-causing genetic variants. And even further, it was able to accurately provide personalized predictions of genetic disease risk in a study of nearly half a million human genomes from the UK Biobank. 
In addition to this study, there was also another parallel project called the Primate Genome Project, which examined 809 different animals across all 16 families of primates and has developed a comprehensive DNA database that covers nearly half of all living primate species. Dr. Richard Gibbs, founding director of the Human Genome Sequencing Center, explains the magnitude of both of these studies like this. He says, these studies bring comparative genomics to new heights, and we can predict the impact on both understanding of human biology and on practical clinical diagnostic issues. Jeffrey Rogers, lead investigator and associate professor at the Human Genome Sequencing Center, goes on to say, When we investigate the genomics of non-human primates, we not only learn about these species, which is important and timely, but we can also place human genetics into its proper comparative context, which provides new insights into human health and human evolution. Wow. So if you want even more information about both of these studies, including Illumina, the company that developed Primate AI 3D, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash eejournal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at eejournaltfm. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, sure, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com. Or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of June 9th, 2023, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.